Spotlight on Southern New Hampshire men's basketball today. We are joined by Penman guard, Matt Becht. Um, first off, welcome. Uh, congratulations on the start to the season that you guys are having. Uh, tell me a little bit about where you guys are as a team and what the hopes are for you building off of a really good year that you had a season ago. Yeah, I'd say, first of all, thanks for having me. And um, I think kind of the hopes are, um, you know, we didn't really know what we had going into the year. Um, we had uh, had a lot of new guys coming in. We lost a lot of production from last year's team. And to kind of see how it's kind of taken shape has kind of been a surprise to everybody. Um, you know, we didn't really know how it would kind of pan out. But, you know, we, we, we know we are a very talented team. And we know that um, we definitely have enough to kind of make a similar run to what we did last year. And that's the hope um, for sure. So, I mean, our, our expectation is to to get to the same same type of level that we were last year, you know, playing for championships and and making that that the standard. Let's talk about your career to get to this point because you have been in college since 2018. Um, <laughs> what does it feel like for for you uh, going on year year six, right, of being a college basketball player? Yeah, um, it's crazy. Um, I never really anticipated, you know, coming into college that my journey would take me to year six and and be in New Hampshire like I tell people all the time like even just coming to New Hampshire I had never visited the state I had never even taken a visit I kind of just needed somewhere to go after you know two years of of not of it not working out you know I had I had major injuries that I dealt with my first two years of school and then we had COVID like and so coming off coming up here after having three surgeries and and kind of just, you know, working through all that adversity and, um, you know, this place is, has been good to me and and I'm I'm just thankful to to have an opportunity to play, you know, college basketball because it is it is a it is a privilege at the end of the day. You know, it's a I know the position that I'm in is is something that a lot of people would want to have um, and I don't try to take that for granted at all. So I'm just taking it day by day for sure. How old are you now, Matt? I'm 24. <laughs> what what's it like for you? Um, I feel like these are questions that people get across the college landscape right now. But when you've got like maybe a seventeen year old freshman who's coming into the programming, uh, and you talk about meshing as a team, like there there's a little bit of a generational divide there. How do how do you mesh as one of the 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 super seniors with uh, the the younger side of the team? Yeah, I mean, I would say that's kind of always been the case, especially for me, like my first year in college in 2018, I had a teammate who had a child. He was 25. He, he was basically um, going on with his life and then he decided to come back and play. So like, it's not completely new to me. Um, at the end of the day, I don't think we've had a 17 or 18 year old freshman in here. Like we've, we've had a lot of older guys. So there has kind of been an ability to, to see at the same level um I do feel old sometimes I will say that um because I because I guess I am old but I mean 24 is really not that old um but I don't know like I, I think that it's just kind of just you know learning how to communicate with with younger guys is definitely a thing um learning how to kind of just stay connected even though there might be that kind of age gap and experience gap for sure because I, I know I've seen probably a lot more college basketball than um, you know, my teammates and, and, and especially the new guys coming in, you know, so um, I would say, I say that's probably the hardest thing, just kind of getting that experience across without coming on like overbearing or, or like, you know, too old. <laughs> Listen, when I was your age, uh, <laughs> uh, tell me about the, the beginning of your career. Let's go back to Mount St. Mary. Um, you came out of high school, you, you went to the division one school down in Maryland and, um, played a little bit, like got in some games early in the seasons in, in November, your first two years, and then had season ending injuries, both of those years. Um, walk me through what happened, what that rebuilding process was like for you. And, and now as you reflect back, how that maybe has molded you as a more veteran player. Yeah. Um, great question. Um, I would say that I haven't really had a chance to like reflect on it. Um, I would say that those two years were very, very tough. Um, just coming into college, 
really not knowing what to expect. I, I went to a really good high school, had a really good high school program, um, you know, or that that competed for championships and local tournaments, like probably the best high school conference in the country. Like that's that's the type of level I was playing at. And then to kind of go to a school where I felt like I could I could have a, a huge impact um, and then to immediately get hurt and to kind of see that other side of of sports, to be honest with you, I'd never really been sidelined with with an injury. Um, you know, I was in and out of of rehab just just in the training room and everything. And and it was it was a shock to me, to be honest with you. Like there were there were times where I I didn't know if I was going to play basketball anymore. You know, um, just just how serious the injuries were. Like I had I had some freak injuries and then there were just like ones that were just like it just it just hurt to have, you know, like I I almost went blind in one eye. Like it's it like it really is just um a crazy journey. And um I I I think that the fact that um I went through that has enabled me to kind of take whatever good or bad and just take it as it comes in stride, you know, like all like the highs and the lows, they don't, they don't really feel as high and as low as like waking up and not being able to play basketball or not even being able to like walk. Like there were times where I, I couldn't really walk. I couldn't even see like, and so just, just experiencing like the little things and like kind of having gratitude for that. I think that's, that's the purpose of what this journey has been for me. Like, it's just been about finding beauty and the little things like, and I think that's kind of molded me who I who I am today as a basketball player and as a person, for sure. For people at home that are thinking like, oh, my God, he can't walk and he can't see. Um, you had an ACL injury. Uh, that was one of them. But but tell me about the the eye injury and, and what happened there. Yeah, so it was my like going into my sophomore year at the Mount. Um, like I woke up one morning, we were in summer school and I felt like something was like scratching at my eye. Um, like I felt like there was like something like in my eye, like I felt like there was maybe like a piece of sand. Um, like I was home for the weekend from summer school. And so I went to like, kind of like just the trainer or whatever, when I got back to school and they were like, Oh, like, it's fine. Like, it's just, you're probably just like irritated from some like allergies, like maybe a bee sting. I don't know. Like, um, and so like, we kind of like a week went on and it kind of didn't get any better. Um, and then like, eventually, like, I really couldn't like see out of the eye. So like, I had to like close the eye, like I was practicing, like my eye basically closed shut. Like eventually, like there's like a little part of my eye that you can see blood, like on the, on the eyeball itself. So, um, so I immediately like went to like the emergency room. They didn't know what it was. Um, eventually my, my eye com like completely turned blood red, like the entire thing, like it was my eyes are like blue. My eyes are like light blue. So it was like everything was blood red and then it was just like light blue. So like, and I, I, at that point I really like couldn't even see, um, you know, so I went to like Georgetown, like Memorial hospital, like got the best doctors to look at it. Um, they said like, I needed like a second opinion. It ended up being a, like basically a burst blood vessel behind my eye that was pushing on my optic nerve. And basically like I I think I had 40% 40 or 30% vision out of my left eye wow. for a couple months so I couldn't play I couldn't do it once once I heard that like I couldn't play I didn't know if I would have to wear an eye patch like I didn't I there was a real chance that I could have gone blind like just because of the damage on your optic nerve um and so eventually I, I saw this specialist um there's only like two doctors that that do this surgery um because it's it's like a really rare thing like it's just so crazy like just even thinking about like it's just not like real to think about because um it's very like rare so I went out to like Ohio um like got that fixed um and thankfully I can I can see now but that that whole process like I probably went through like eight doctors got so many scans went on so many different like medication like it was just a lot you know, so um, there's certain days where I just I just like to 
just sit and just just think like okay like I, I made it through all that and I'm just much more appreciative of of the small things you know I was gonna say when you start talking about things like that it's it's not so much am I ever gonna play basketball again as opposed to like I want to make sure I see well <laughs> um but you had referred to the fact that there was a thought that hey maybe I don't play basketball again um what were those days like and and what does it feel like now having the success you are a couple of years later yeah it's kind of surreal to be honest with you um it's it's surreal to think about that just cuz that that was the real thing like i didn't know when my health would kind of just get back into line um and so to even like think about that like I kind of get emotional just thinking about it, like, because just everything I went through personally and and everything like with that, like, I'm just so grateful, um, you know, that I get to play, you know, um, and that's why I kind of say, like, the wins and the losses really don't matter too much. It's more just about being out there and like, I love competing. I love playing with my teammates. I love you know, just the work that goes into it. Like a lot of people don't see the work behind closed doors and the hours spent, you know, working on my body, working on, you know, all this other stuff. Um, but it's surreal, you know, just to just to kind of become an all-conference player up here, to kind of leave like a legacy up here. Um, it's awesome. And I'm I'm truly appreciative and I'm truly, truly grateful for the time I've I've been up here. It's 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 really you know, turned, turned a good chapter in my life for sure. Did the injuries impact you off the court at all? Cause I, like, I know you, you did some work at like the rehab place that you were going to for your knee. Um, was there maybe an impact of like, Hey, I want to get involved in helping other people going through injuries or maybe how does it influence you off the court? Yeah. Um, I would say for, it, it affected me profoundly. Um, like just, just going through all that and seeing the other side of, seeing really the other side of sports, like how quick can be it can be taken away from you at any point in time. And I think that people underestimate the mental side of that um, in terms of like an ACL, like it's more like mental than it actually is physical because it's, it's being taken away from you and you kind of have to learn how to, to walk again and learn how to have confidence in, in what you're doing. So I've had people come up to me and and ask, like, you know, how did you do it? Like in terms of like for their for their sake, like, OK, like I'm going through this, like my son or my this and this and that just had knee surgery or whatever. Like, do you have any advice? And my advice is always like just just try to appreciate and just try to, like, take it one step at a time. And like, don't get don't get too ahead of yourself, especially in those processes, because you can, it's so easy to grow impatient and patience is the number one thing that's probably tested me throughout my entire college career. Just like, you know, just, just be patient. Like, um, you know, God has a plan for you. Um, I'm definitely, you know, very religious and I, I believe that everything has a purpose and sometimes it, it feels like there's, there's no reason for things to happen, but there always is, you know, like, um, so I would say that it's definitely drawn me closer to, you know, what I, what I like value the most, you know, my faith, my family and my friends and, and my sport as well. So everything has a purpose on that note. Uh, you had said you never even visited New Hampshire. Um, <laughs> how did you wind up at Southern New Hampshire and, and why has that been the perfect marriage for you over the last several years? Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it's just fate, I guess. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think I think that's honestly just just God putting putting this chapter in my life and and me just just going through it. And I feel like this year is I mean, this is going to be my last year. I'm finishing up my master's degree and, and everything. And this is my sixth year of college. So probably done with that, <laughs> even though I have like I might even still have one more year after this. I probably probably won't take it. Um, I want to go pursue a professional career like overseas for a couple years but it's it really is just just fate you know just kind of the people I've met um the friends I've been able to make the experiences I've been able to have like 
it's it's crazy and and I can't really put into words to be honest with you like it, it is still like it's still becoming that's why like I don't really try to reflect on it too much because I feel like you've never really like arrived like I haven't like arrived yet like it's kind of like my story still being written like um obviously I think I think we all want this season and I especially want this season to end on a great note you know like I've been here for this is my third year like um I had a great first two years um and I want this one to be the best one yet um but yeah it's 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 crazy to think about sometimes for sure like I, I never would have thought New Hampshire <laughs> how did you pick it like what was the selling point for you yeah, I mean, I I almost had to sell them to take me, like just coming off of three surgeries. You got like, no film, basically, right? Yeah, like almost no film. Like it was really, um, you know, Coach Perry. Like I I think I have one of the most unique relationships I've ever had with a coach, um, and I I think just immediately we kind of um like saw eye to eye on some things. Like even just on the phone, like I I felt like I'd known him for a while. Um, and our relationship is, is very, very special and something that I'll, I'll always value and appreciate. Um, but it really just came down to like a leap of faith. Like I, and I didn't have anywhere else to go. Um, and so I'm really just thankful that it came down to that because like, I think if there were other options, I probably wouldn't have chose it just based off just never visiting, like not really knowing much about, like I, I'd been to Boston like one time. I'd never even been to New Hampshire, like before committing. So, I mean, yeah, like it's, that's just kind of like what, what God put in my life, I guess. So. Well, Matt Beck, uh, I'm glad it's worked out. Uh, congratulations on the success so far and best of luck uh, here throughout the rest of 2024. Thank you, Joel. Thank you for having me.